So, welcome all of you in the last one or two classes we have been discussing about nuclear over azure effect spectroscopy. I introduced concepts and what is NOE and what are the factors that govern NOE and we discuss varieties of conditions what will, what will happen to the NOE what whether there will be a gain or not at depending upon omega tau c and we arrived at three conditions omega tau c greater than 1 omega tau c less than 1 omega tau c approximately equal to 1 and we said at omega tau c equal to 1 approximately equal to 1 NOE will be 0. In other two conditions extreme narrowing conditions and diffusion limits there will be NOE positive or negative accordingly. So, we discussed lot of the things about it and also we arrived at the uh, relaxation phenomena in the sense the bipolar relaxation which is responsible for this NOE and where are these fluctuating fields coming from. Then we arrived at j omega and then the spectral density function depends upon the omega uh, of course, uh, also probably to the transition w 1 w 2 and w 0 and then we also discuss about this fluctuating field because of the molecular motion which depends upon tau c correlation time and also on the spectrometer time on the normal frequency spectrometer frequency. So, then varieties of factors are responsible for this we discussed everything and then at the end we arrived at the equations for NOE enhancement and we saw the NOE enhancement would be for a homonuclear spin in the extreme narrowing condition will be about half that is what we saw that in the case of homonuclear. In the for a heteronuclear case we also saw that depending upon the ferromagnet ratios the enhancement factors will be different and we can we saw even up to 1200, 1500 times enhancement we saw in some of the heteronuclear case where proton is the irradiating spin. So, the all these things we saw and then we found out varieties of possible NOE experiment for example, steady state NOE where we are going to selectively irradiate a peak at a low RF power and then do another one with equal RF power at a far off place far off resonance half resonance and take the difference between two and if there is any NOE enhancement for any of the particular spins which are close by that gets reflected in the spectrum in the difference spectrum that is the steady state NOE we saw one or two examples of that. And also next is transient NOE that is a 2D NOE we discuss a lot about 2D NOE what is 2D what is how do you get the 2D NOE NOE is like everything and then we discuss more about ROSI also ROSI is a rotation frame over as an effect spectroscopy that is done and favorable for molecules when omega tau is approximately equal to 1 where you do not get NOE whereas rho c always is positive NOE that is an advantage. So, we took one or two examples of rho c and what are the complications involved in rho c, rho c and all these techniques including steady state what happens if you do not have a selective excitation where frequency is not proper what happens if the multiplex peak of the couple spin entire multiplate region is not selectively saturated what will happen. So, varieties of problems complications are there in all these experiments some type of complications are there and we know how some of these can be overcome that also we discussed. And then coming to 2D NOE we discussed the pulse sequences and I told you if we are going to cross peak which is symmetric with respect to the diagonal we discussed that and then we started even getting the application of that to find out how NOC can be used on some simple molecules. And we took one example to see uh, how this nosy helps in getting the confirmation of that molecule. With that, we will continue further today. We will take few more examples of nosy, how 2D and OE can be utilized to get the structure of our confirmation of the molecules. Especially some of the molecules, some simple to right, like complex molecules, I show that is the important condition because basically in this course, I wanted to tell you about how we can analyze the spectrum, how we can use the different NMR techniques 1D and 2D to get the structural information for your molecule. Okay, we will start with uh, another molecule today. <coughs> we, st uh, we, st we did cis 17 yesterday in the last class. Now, we will start with another molecule here. This is the molecule, some name for it trans 2 actin 4 1 in 4 O n in DMSO. This is a NMR spectrum, this is a Cauchy spectrum. Of course, very easily you can interpret the Cauchy spectrum. You can always start to see it as I to always tell you. See, H proton H8 is there, that is a triplet because of this and then this will be triplet of triplet because of this and this will be triplet because of this and very easily you can interpret it. But anyway Cauchy is going to help you in identifying all the peaks. Start with that one uh, here you have, we have taken from H2 proton okay H2 and then which is correlated to H3 here 
because this is an isolated uh, pair, isolated spin system. You can see that, and there is there is a lot separation between CO is in between, and there is no coupling between this and this. So they are all forming isolated pair. One, two, and three are isolated pairs spin system, and this is another spin system. There are two spin systems here, which course you will easily identify. So this is what we started with one of them H2, and then it correlates to H1, and then also to H3, and of course in this region. You can identify from a, a methyl peak, and of course there is a cross peak H8 to H7, and then of course other way one uh, other also six and five. You will get the cross peaks. So easy. This is a crowded region. I didn't explain this. This is very easy. I assume that I know how to make the assignment by using cosy uh, ascend all the peaks. My main idea is to get the conformational information for this molecule using nosy. This is nosy spectrum of the same molecule. Of course, you you will see that the peaks are will be not exact identical to cosy because there will be additional peaks coming because of the nosy. Again, we can see there are correlations here from proton three to proton one, and proton three. Uh, pro, proton three. Where is proton three? Uh, proton three to proton five here. What does it tell you? See, with proton one. Is correlated to proton three. This is possible only when these two are on the same side of the double bond of this uh, double bond. Similarly, CH two is correlated to H three. That also implies that these two are on the same side of the double bond. So these correlations are seen here. This is the correlation H three to H one, and then you also have H three to H five. Both are being seen here, and this puts them, this CH three and CH, on the same side of the double bond. Okay, and further, if you you can also see the correlation between H two to H one, which is this is H two, H two to H one is there, and H two to H five is also there. That you can see here, H two to H one, and also H two to H five. What does this say? That means these are all on the other side of the double bond. So this clearly tells you the uh, the case. No C cross peaks tells me. This cross peak between these two puts them on the one side of the double bond, and cross peak between two and three here, and of course two and three are trans to each other across the double bond. This confirms the alkene protons two and three are trans to each other because these are one side, these two are on one side from the correlation information what we got from the Nosy spectrum. Okay, the question is if the alkene were to be cis, what would have happened? This instead of trans, we know correlation is between this and this. And between this and this, that's why we said these two are trans to each other, and these two are on one side of the double bond. That's fine. If this they were not trans, what would have happened? If it were to be cis, then you would not get H two to H five correlation. This this correlation you will not see, and you will you will not get H three and H one correlation. If it is on the other side, the distance becomes more. You will not get the correlation. So this type of correlations, what we observe for this molecule, puts. These two on one side and these on other side of the double bond, and establishes cis geometry for the alkene group of this molecule. Okay, for the alkene protons, it it establishes cis geometry. This is how we can understand very easily. We can interpret it. We will extend further how we can get the information about the substitution at a particular you know site specific substitution if it is there in our in phenyl groups. How we can use no C. If for that, I have taken the example of three fluoro four methoxy acetophenone. This is the molecular structure. We want to see our main idea is where is this O C A three and where is this one with respect to fluorine. This is, or in other words, we need to get the structure of the molecule. What, where are the where with the where the, where is the position of fluorine? This and this with respect to that. That information about the structure we should get. We can use our various methods. Like cosy, no see everything will adapt. Now the first is you have to get a proton NMR spectrum. We need to analyze that. Of course, this analysis does not is not a rocket science. Very easily you can understand looking at this one. Of course, this proton eight is COCH three, CH three, and of course proton nine is OCH three directly attached to this one. This is a methoxy proton. This is just CH three groups. And this is here. This is here. H eight and H nine, and both of them are singlets. There is no long range coupling to this 
we are seeing maybe there we are not seeing it and the remaining thing is only these three protons 1 2 and 3 and they are all coupled to fluorine remember fluorine is a spin off nuclei 100% abundant so fluorine proton couplings are reflected in this in this spectrum so looking at the spectrum you can i try to understand make the assignment which proton is which very easily you can do that if you look at this pro this one this experience is only one ortho coupling it has to be a doublet ah this one experience only one coupling with fluorine it has to be a doublet so for example if you look at this one this can experience a meta coupling this can experience a para coupling we can see varieties of things so be best thing is we will expand this and see the spectrum this is a proton spectrum of these three protons expanded look at it very easily you can identify which is which this is proton 5 the proton 5 is here why did it reply it? of course this has one one ortho coupling with this and also meta coupling with this if both of them are nearly equal it should be doublet of doublet or if they are equal it will be a triplet so this could be h h5 because it is equal come to h2 h2 has a one ortho coupling with fluorine and a meta coupling with this para coupling may be or may not be seen so it is a doublet of a doublet i can clearly say that is h2 what about h6 h6 proton will have ortho coupling with this and a meta coupling with this and also a para coupling in principle it should be doublet of doublet of a doublet eight line pattern large doublet is because of one of the ortho couplings and then coupling with the fluorine and then with this one okay to simplify the problem what we can do is we will do the fluorine decoupling that is also possible electron nuclear decoupling we can do while observing proton when you do the fluorine decoupling what will happen we are going to break all the couplings of proton with fluorine only we will get H H couplings, F H couplings are completely removed. That's what we do. Broad band fluorine decoupling of the proton spectrum, and this is the fluorine decoupled spectrum. If you look at it, H five is a doublet. Obviously, this has to be this. Only one bond ortho coupling. I mean, uh, uh, six uh, three bond is there. Three bond ortho coupling between five five and six. Then H two, H two is F coupling is broken. Then it is only a meta coupling, so this is with this. So I can clearly or conclusively say that is proton 2. Then what about the other one? Other one is proton 6. Proton 6 is very easily you can identify. This is proton 6. It has one ortho coupling and meta coupling, doublet of doublet. Large doublet is because of ortho coupling, and small doublet operation is because of meta coupling. Very easily you can do it by doing the fluorine decoupling. Same thing if it is little experience, we can do without decoupling also, fluorine decoupling, but this simplifies the spectrum. So, now we have made the assignment of proton 2, 5, and 6 from the uh, for all the three protons in the proton spectrum using both fluorine decoupling and non decoupled spectrum. And this is the spectrum, and this comes because of J ortho, I told you, J meta, this is J ortho plus J meta, as that is the reason why. Remember, when I analyze the pro, uh, phenyl group proton spectrum of the molecules containing phenyl groups, multiplicity pattern, how it comes, I explained to you based on ortho coupling, meta coupling, and para coupling, what type of pattern we get. Using that knowledge here, we can com completely make the assignment. All right. From the coupling pattern and the using this one also, we know this compound. Look at it this one ortho, one meta, and one ortho and meta coupling is there. How this type of spectra, uh, splitting arises. From this, you can com come to a conclusion this must be 1 to 4 tri substituted because here look at it here. If it is 1 to 4 tri substituted, see what will happen this is 1 and 2 and 4 tri substituted. So, that is the situation only then this pattern will come because of ortho meta para coupling what we saw here this pattern is possible only if the substitution is 1 to 4 tri substituted benzene which substituent is in which position is a different question but the three pl places at which in the phenyl group their substitution comes is at 1 2 and 4 okay then find out the possibilities we know the structure of this molecule is given there are various possibilities 1 2 4 this could be one possibility 1 2 and 4 fluorine instead of here could be here and 1, 2 and 4 fluorine is here and these two are ortho to each other. Think of all the possibilities. There are 6 such possibilities we can think of. 
if for one to four substitution where one is fluorine other two substitutions are OCH3 and double COCH3 okay this is the situation. So, there are six possibilities we will think of that. Now, let us look at the nosy spectrum assuming that we know already as a assignment have already been made. Let us, let us look at the nosy spectrum nosy gives C A 3 protons show correlation to two protons H 2 and H 6 we have already made the assignment this is H 2 and H 6 here here ok see this one H 2 and H 6 both are close by and no C is giving me cross peak especially the C A 3 proton this is the C A 3 proton not O C A 3 O C A 3 comes on field I told you. So, this C A 3 proton is giving cross peak to two protons kind of that means what is the conclusion you are going to draw this tells me that this group must be between between two protons of the phenyl group it cannot be one like this it is not possible it cannot be here because other side is this one it must be between two protons of the phenyl group that because of the correlations 2 and 6 are seen for ca3 group this place is the acyl group between two protons of the aromatic group aromatic protons so what are the, the possibilities in think of there are six possibilities then if this has to be between two protons then this is not possible this is not possible this is not possible this is not possible so all four possibilities are ruled out then we are left with only two possibilities because of C A 3 is giving cross peak to two protons either this should be this or this only here this position is changed that is all that is the only possibility where C O C A 3 can be between two protons. Now, there are two possibilities we will go further down look at the nosy spectrum again we look at OCH3 protons OCH3 this proton gives cross peak to proton 5 which is at 7.2 this one see it is giving a cross peak OCH3 this is OCH3 see from diagonal come here go here and then come to this square. So, this OCA3 is giving a cross peak to only one phenyl group proton. That means, what is the possibilities we can think of? Then, this will be the only possibility fluorine the, is on the right side, it is not giving correlation to that. So, that means, if you look at if this, if you consider this possibility, already we have eliminated this, now this is also eliminated because if this is the fluorine, OCA3 cannot give correlation to this if this is the only possibility it can give correlation to this. So, fluorine cannot be here fluorine has, has to be on other side here it cannot be here ok that is what uh, is the conclusion. So, this also is ruled out then what is the OCA 3 protons must be ortho to H 5 proton that is what the conclusion otherwise OCA 3 cannot give correlation to this. So, OCA 3 proton is ortho to H 5 proton using this no C information we can draw the conclusion now this is the structure of molecule because they we understood this is between two protons and this is giving cross peak to this one alone that confirms me this is the structure all other possibilities are ruled out. So, beautifully using the no C you can get the confirmation I hope you got your point we will go further let us look at the another molecule this is a molecule we will uh, use all the pala allowed techniques possible techniques in 2D like co-CHS, QCHMBC, no C etcetera and get the structure of the molecule. I am showing you all these things, but you know if we are little bit of experienced the person if you know if you already worked in the NMR for couple of weeks or months then all you do not require you know 1D NMR, co-C is not required, HSQ is not required looking at the my, my simple molecule and you know, protein NMR spectrum you will be fairly easy enough to for you to analyze and get the information. But to make you comfortable to comfort all of you I am going through all this 2D spectrum. So, that you know how what are the steps you have to follow to analyze the spectrum. Of course, this is a proton proton cosy very easily you can do that this is proton 1 this is CA 3 CH 2 in isolated group here. So, the proton 1 can correlate to this is triplet and this is a quadrate this is correlated to this this is only isolated group no other correlation. So, Cosi identified this and then uh, next is this one we start with this so, 
OCH3, this is OCH3 come down and it correlates to two protons which are here. And again one this is correlated to one of them this will correlate within itself the other one. So, 4 and 5 are correlated and both of them are correlated to one very easily you can identify which is which. And of course, further to find out the number of carbons and everything whether it is CH2 proton or CH3 protons because we need to identify whether CH2 or not by looking at the multiple pattern triplet and quartet you know you one is CH other is CH3. Just to make you understand where we can utilize multiplicity edited HSQC spectrum if you do that you see the opposite sign here that tells me H2 proton must be CH2 okay very easily you know that fine that is what it is and you know the correlations from this which are the carbon chemical sheet which are the correlations everything you can identify. There are only 5 protons here uh, 5 different correlations we are seeing of course this this carbon you are not going to see confirms there is one CH2 by this multiple rated HSQC. Of course, we can also do HMB to get, get the correlation of carbon carbon correlation of course, that is not needed if you want to get the structure I am looking at only whether this position is whether this is trans to each other or cis to each other for that we do not require HMBC, but for the sake of showing I am showing you these are all there are uh, sometimes it so happens you will get large class peaks which are widely separated like this they are all one bond HSQC correlations they are not efficiently filtered out. In HMBC I told you one bond HSQC correlation peaks are filtered out, but if they do not filter out efficiently you see all of them here there are 4 such correlations are seen here all right. And then you can see HMBC H1 is correlating to C2 this is correlating to C2 and H1 is also correlating to C3 this puts them as one side and one side of the C double bond wow ok these correlations H2 is also correlating to C1 see H1 is correlating to C2 H1 is correlating to C3 H2 is correlating to C1 and H2 is also correlating to C3. So, varieties of correlations you can see this idea places me puts the C A 3 C H 2 on one side of C double bond wow that is what we can say we can say C A 3 C H 2 is attached to C double bond O from these correlations my H M B C correlations I hope it is clear for you. So, remember there are th uh, correlations what you have to see here is this is correlating to this carbon this is also correlating to this and this is correlating to this carbon this is carbon like this. This makes me the idea that C A 3 C H 2 is attached to C double bond O all right we will go further. Now, we can also see H 4 correlating to C 6 H 4 correlating to C 6 H 4 correlating to C 2 H 4 correlating to C 3 all correlations we can see. Similarly, H 5 correlation 3 car carbons it correlates similarly H 6 correlated to 3 different carbons all this tell puts me tells me that this group is on other side of the C double bond O if you carefully go through it one by one slowly we can see we can see that one. But anyway that that tells me that now there is a C double bond O this is on one side and this is on one side. So, some sort of an information about the molecular structure is known we will use the no C now further to get the confirmation basically what you need to come to come to know is whether these are trans or cis to each other. And if you see the no C there are several correlations here one C A 3 to C H 2 this one is there this correlation H 2 H 1 correlation is there and H 5 H 6 correlation and H 4 H 6 correlation is there this is fantastic this H 4 H 6 correlations here they tell me the easily tells they are going to tell uh, tell me that the H 4 H 6 are one side of the double bond whereas, the C A 3 uh, the H 2 correlating to H 1 they are on other side and then further we are going to get H 4 H 6 correlations H 5 H 6 correlations H 5 H 6 correlations are seen H 5 H 2 correlations are seen see here H 5 H 6 and H 5 H 2 correlations are seen what does it tell you all these 6 correlations if you will see it tells me this correlation if you see H 2 correlated to H 1 H 4 to H 2 it tells me this is on other side of the one side of the double bond. Similarly, these correlations tell me for example, H 4 and 
H6 correlation tells me that they are on the these two are uh, H4 H6 tells me these four are on one side of the double bond. So, the all these correlations tells me now this then this and this it's correlation H4 H6 indicate it is a trans geometry H4 H6 correlation and this correlation and this correlation tells me they are in the trans geometry. If they were to be cis you would not have got H4 H6 correlation ok. So, that is the I think. So, the, this is what it is this indicates the tra trans geometry for this alkene functional group. So, we now you know H4 H6 and H5 correlation would be absent this one H4 H6 and H5 H2 this correlation would be absent if this group were to be cis because this H would come here then C8 would be here then this H5 and H2 correlation would not be seen. Similarly, H4 H6 correlation would not be seen because this will be trans to this one. This type of observation tells me that this uh, these two protons alkene protons are trans to each other and not cis to each other. So, both observation of the peaks and non observation if in case if it would be cis you would not have seen that. So, that is why it we can come to a conclusion what is the structure or geometry of this molecule. We can go further for this molecule. Another one this is a very simple spectrum look at it we have proton 9 this is easily analyzable. We analyze this in the 1D, 2D, 1D and Cosi also I remember. So, we can start looking at the Cosi spectrum. Cosi spectrum identify this one H3 to H2 coupling and from H2 we can go to this is number 8 and 9, 8 to 9 is then. So, 9 to 8, 8 to 7 it comes and then we here 7 to 6 is there, 6 you can go further and you will identify 5, from 5 you can go to 4, 4. 4 to 3 like that entire all these protons could be assigned just systematically going step by step. I did this step by step you can slow, slowly see it I will uh, show you again see 9 is I identify the peak 9 which I am confident 9 I will go uh, it correlates to 8 from 8 it will go to 7, 7 to 6 is there 6 to go 5 it goes 5 to 4 is correlated here itself and 4 to 3 is here and 3 to 2 here and 2 to 1 everything you can assign without any difficulty all right. Of course, multiple additive HSQC confirms how many CH2s are there. There are here 3 red peaks you can see negative peaks that shows there are 3 CH2s in this molecules ok. And of course, you can uh, start looking at the HSBC, HMBC and make the assignment of all the carbon car proton carbon correlation here H 1 C 1 here and then H 2 C 2 H 1 C 3 H 1 is correlating to C 1 C 2 and C 3 and H 4 is correlating to C 3 and H 5 is correlating to C 3 these both. So, all this information if you couple you will find out what is what completely we can make the assignment of every peak here ok as we will uh, not go step by step very easily of course, I have already told you how you can analyze the HMBC spectrum. Just I wanted to show that we can using this HMBC and all this expanded region with all the correlations here you can identify get the structure of the molecule the carbon skeleton of the molecule. More than that now we got the first proton assignment carbon skeleton carbon chemical shoots everything, but finally what is left is conformation of the molecule. Here we use no C when you do the no C the H1 and H3 correlations are such there here see H1 H3 correlations are there H1 and H3 this correlation says they are on the same side of the double bond. If this was to be here you would not see correlation for H1 and H3 if it were to be cis because these two are on the same side of the double bond you are seeing the correlation. So, H1 H3 correlations are seen similarly H7 H6 correlations are seen this also tells me they must be on the same side of the double bond. When you say these two on the same side of the double bond this must be a cis geometry you have got the information already and you can exp expand this further you can see H 1 correlating to H 3 and H 3 to H 5 this is correlating to this one and H 2 is correlating to H 4 here. See this should be on this side if it was to be the if on the other side it would not give correlation to H 4. So, all these thing indicates 
this is a trans geometry whereas this is a cis geometry you understand the point now correlations of nose it tells me this double bond if you consider the proton 2 and 3 they are trans to each other whereas looking at the correlation of 6 and 7 I can say proton 6 and 7 are cis to each other. In this molecule H5 H8 correlation places here 2 CH2 groups on the same side of the double bond here. In addition to 6 7 we also see 5 8 correlation here this 5 8 correlation is you can see here this is. So, this tells me when I see that 5 8 correlation these 2 CH2 groups on one side 6 7 correlation cell these 2 on one, one side and this this correlation tells me these are on that side one side of the double bond and this 2 tells me they are to each other. So, varieties of correlation information we could get so many correlated peaks all these things put together in a nutshell we can say this molecule has one double bond with a trans geometry and another double bond with a cis geometry this is the structure of the molecule. So, we can get the structure of the molecule very easily like that of course, uh, we can continue further in one more molecule we will see that and I uh, will quickly show you this is 1D spectrum very easily you can analyze this one where there is no difficulty assume take the cross peak cosy peak here this is all phenyl group here in the cosy you can identify and okay, this is the phenyl group and no see if you go I am sorry okay. this is the phenyl group why it is going so fast ok this these two are correlated to each other ok then there is a correlation among only these groups here you can see that all right we can use multiple edited HSQC to identify whether there is a CH2 there is only one of them is red color negative sign which tells me this C1 this uh, H1 C1 is correlated and H1 this must be CH2 ok with that information. Now, we go to no C this is where clear information you are going to get OH correlates to H1 here this is a OH proton it is this correlates to H1 here OH is here it is correlating to H1 here you see there is a correlated peak these two are correlated and then also OH is correlating to H8 this one this tells me these two are on the same side especially close to each other H3 correlates to H1 which is H3 here H3 is here see H3 correlates to H1 and OH both it also correlates to OH when H3 is correlating to OH and H1 that means this CH2 and this proton are on one side of the double bond. This clearly tells me this correlation tells me this CH3 is on the other side of the double bond, this correlation tells me CH2 and H are on the other side of the double bond. So, like this you get the correlation information indicates CH2 and OH are on one side and this uh, these two protons this correlation tells me this is on the other side this CH2. So, using this also further you can go H8 this one is correlating to H5 because these two are symmetric I will not written here, but this is also same these two this C A3 is correlating to aromatic proton H5 that is clearly tells me these two are trans to each other because there is a correlation between this and this and there is no correlation between this and this there is a correlation between C A3 and this proton aromatic proton all this tells me then CH3 and phenyl are on the same side of the double bond. So, this clearly gives me the idea about the geometry of this molecule and this is the term and there is no correlation between H3 and H8 this and this there is no correlation because they are trans to each other very easily you got correlation between this and this you got correlation between this and this you got correlation between this and this that is all very easily using this information you can fix the geometry of this molecule that tells me CH3 and H are trans to each other and of course, this is how we can analyze using the a lot of structure of the molecules and I think we took fairly good, good number of examples I am going to what I am going to do is uh, I will stop here in this class we have discussed taken several examples of simple molecules 
to show how we can utilize combined use of all the 2D technique like OC, HSQC, HMBC, NOC. Sometimes all are not needed. In some cases, you require it. Just if you are a beginner, you should go through all the things, all the spectra, so that you know how to go systematically. Or if you are a, already a person working with NMR and little bit of uh, you know experience for couple of weeks or months you have worked, you don't need anything. Just one D spectrum or course you will get some information. Straight away you can go to no, go, no see. Based on the correlation information, we could face get the structure of the molecule. So we could uh, get uh, several examples of the molecule which has got a double bond where you could get the cis trans geometry and in the phenyl group we could find out the substitution position and rule out all other possibilities by just by using no C. So, these are some of the examples I will stop here we will continue with other uh, few more examples and other topics in the next class. Thank you.